another absolutely crazy week of NRL fantasy. Absolutely bonkers. Before we get into this week's recap and going around the grounds, though, I just want to speak to the coaches about a tough time this week. Now, for you guys who had a really struggle this week, had a lot of injuries, maybe a zero score from a few players, I just want to say that better times are ahead. This is an abnormality, and we won't normally get this many injuries. Um, so without further ado, look, let's look into next week, and let's get excited by going back. First guy here to note is Eli Katoa, part of mine, 74 points, super happy with this. It was a great start to the week. It went downhill from there, um, but he's a beast. Two tries, 74 points. Yeah, pretty unstoppable. Still some decent value there. Jerome Hughes, really good fixtures coming up, but uh, I probably wouldn't get Jerome Hughes with Munster back. Paddy Carrigan, a really nice score with 61 points there. Same as Harry Grant, 61 points for him too. Just rolling down the list here, Ezra Mam had a better game. Sean Bloor. He was noteworthy, 45 points. If he gets 80 minutes, he's very exciting. And then rolling down the list, look, there isn't too much to talk about here. Ben Takura, he played good footy in limited minutes in this one. And then down the bottom, um, yeah, nothing crazy here. Just Ryan Pappenhausen with 24 points. I would not panic on him. I'd just keep on rolling with him. But um, that's the Storm and the Broncos game. Rolling into the next one here. Bulldogs and the Roosters and noteworthy Matty Burton, 82 points. Look, everything went right for Matt Burton in this game. He had three tries. He just was absolutely dominant everywhere. Played some time at center as well, um, which didn't really help his fantasy score. But would I go buy him? Probably not. But at the same time, big score for him. Luke Keery, he took over. Obviously, they lost Tedesco and Sam Walker in this game. So it meant that Luke Keery really had to be the dominant half. And he was that guy. Again, I don't expect it to continue. Joey Manu, if he gets some time at fullback, depending on Tedesco's injury, really bad um, concussion for Teddy. So just means that Joey Manu could sneak into some more minutes in future weeks. So if he does get a long time at fullback, very interesting. I think it's Crichton, 437K, 57 points. That was about his break even. So he's going to stay at that price. Uh, yeah, he was a beast. If you can get Crichton, go get him. Just worth noting that Nat Butcher was out of this game due to um, some outside of footy circumstances. So... Yeah, Gus Crichton probably won't get 80 minutes every week, but he is really exciting. Jamin Salmon, obviously there are a few injuries, so uh, Kurt Mann's hurt. Max King is what hurt as well. It means that Salmon will keep getting some good minutes and could stay in our sides a little bit longer. Karaz, 31. Look, he's going to be up and down. If I had him, I wouldn't panic. I'd hold on. Hutchison, 31 points. He might be a sell very soon. His break even's getting a bit high, so I'm going to look to sell him. And then down the list, look, Taff, he copped... Um, Stopped the knockout in this one and only got 28 points, but he was looking good before that. Uh, Terrell May, look, we're going to talk about this during the week, but that was a disaster score. He only got like 20 minutes in this game, uh, which was a bit of a worry, but apparently some a few other circumstances have impacted that. I think he'll bounce back next week is my feeling on it. Tupanua played a game at center. If you haven't sold him yet, he's probably a sell now. And then, look, Stephen Crichton's getting very, very cheap, but probably not cheap enough for me to make the move. Tedesco, we'll see how he pulls up next week. It was a, a tough injury in that one. And then Dom Young, minus 12. <laughs> it's the lowest score of the year. Uh, look, he might be on the sidelines for a little bit. Great player, though. So when he comes back in, um, give him a few weeks and he might get cheap and we might want to buy him. That game was crazy. That's taken more time than it was meant to. Uh, but look, just so much to talk about in that game. Um, next one here is uh, the Knights and Dragons. And if you do want a deeper analysis on these games as well, check out the Casual Athlete on YouTube. Uh, we go really deep on these games. But Knights v. Dragons, we got Dylan Lucas first. Look, Stone Stone Cold Killer here. Um, 525K, 72 points. Tyson Frizzell is out for a while with a hamstring injury. I believe it's looking like about six weeks, but I need confirmation on that. Um, we're going to look at that this week, but uh, Dylan Lucas could be a guy you bring into your team. Zach Lomax just keeps on turning up. Uh, will he stay at St. George long-term? Will he move clubs? We don't know the answer to that, which makes it hard to buy him. Kalen Ponga tearing up. Would I go buy him? Probably not personally but if you held on to him and held the faith then bravo to you and then going down the list here look jack de in 53 minutes 56 points if he ever gets 80 minutes again he is just a must-have jack cogger was getting cheap and he scored a 52 so he's going to be an interesting one to have a look at i'm probably not going to make that move but worth a glimpse kai ps paul 47 points yeah that's great look he, he had a quiet game for him and um 47 is fine for your back row you can you can absolutely take that to the bank uh, Jaden Braley, 512K, is getting cheaper and cheaper. He'll be around the mid 400s at some point, so we might have a look at him pretty soon. And then jumping down the list, yes, some disappointments. Um, look, Flanagan had a really quiet game in this one. He's probably going to be a sell very soon for your fantasy teams, even though he's playing pretty decent footy in real life. 
All right, Bunnies and the Warriors. Uh, now, Sean Johnson, absolute masterclass in this game. Look, 87 points, got a couple of tries. He was everywhere. Um, he scored 59 the two weeks before that as well, so his base stats have been really good. He's been waiting for that attacking explosion game. If you want to go get Sean Johnson, look, I only played 72 minutes, so I just want to keep an eye on him in terms of any potential injuries. But if he comes out fit, he gets named, all of that, then, um, yeah, you could go buy Sean Johnson right now. He's a pretty good price. Uh, CNK, I'm not as interested. Tamari Martin, I wouldn't do that personally. Cook had a better game but played less minutes. Uh, Phil Blake was solid. Yeah, Cam Murray only played about 60 minutes. I'm not that hyped about that. Um, and South Sydney are really struggling at the moment as well. Uh, so they might give him more minutes in future weeks, but he has carried a few niggles. RTS playing great in real life. It's not really translating to fantasy. So if you've got him in fantasy, probably bigger problems this week, but he's a guy I'd keep an eye on. Latrell Mitchell out for three weeks and he scored 29 points as well. So yeah, he started really hot this year and it's really cooled off. Uh, I would probably sell him. Then down the list, yeah, nothing too crazy down the bottom. Um, Chanel harris David is going to be very cheap. If you ever get to start, he might be like 230K at that point. So we'll keep an eye out for that too. All right, we've got the Panthers and the Seagulls, and the Seagulls have bounced back in a big way. 32-18 winners over the Panthers on the back of a daily Cherry Evans masterclass, 86 points. Now, we were talking about him last week. He has started really slow this year. 736K is crazy cheap for Cherry Evans. Um, 86 points in this one. He's on my radar. Would I do it this week? He's got the Warriors this week, so it'll be a tough one, but this is probably the week that you have to do it. He has the Titans the week after as well, who have been leaking some points to fantasy players. Dylan Edwards, two tries in this one. I'm not that interested here. Tommy Turbo has that breakout game we were talking about. Look, 50 average. He's doing fine. If you had him, you're very happy. Um, Isaiah Yo, we like that from him, 64. Um, Brad Schneider, 52 points as well. That was, was good for him, but he's going to be out with a bye next week and then the week after clear he's back tango 41 i'd hold tango if i had him personally um he's got that week off for the bye but then he'll be back too down the list look Taylor may he has really struggled uh so 38 average he started so hot this year in the world club challenge in round one and he just hasn't gotten the ball volume in previous weeks so even even this game 89 meters is just not good enough um for your fantasy team so i would consider selling him if i had him uh, ben Trubovic, he grabbed some attacking stats in the end, got 33 points, played that full game at center. So that was a bit of a weird one for him. Um, then down the list, nothing too crazy to report down here. We've got, yeah, Tommy Talau will get nice and cheap again with four points. Um, Ruben Garrick did cop an injury in this one, didn't score any points. So he will get very, very cheap in future weeks. Um, and Liam Henry also was knocked out of this one with injury too. All right, going through, we got the Tigers and the Dolphins, and this was a pretty good game. Um, Dolphins really stamped their, their authority on this one. Um, Stefano Otokomanu, though, he just continues to pass the eye test. So he's been absolutely fantastic to start this year. In real life, in fantasy, it doesn't matter. Look, a 56 average from him, 627K. He'll go up to pass 650K this week. Um, he could still potentially be valued. The issue is that he's playing so well that he will almost certainly be in the origin team. So he could be a major pod for you if you want to have a look at it. Um, I actually don't mind this move at all if you want Stefano. Um, Isaiah Katoa, we talked about him a bit too. Look, he, he's a bit up and down. He had an up game in this, but um, he's been up and down. And the price is probably a little too expensive for you to make that move now. Um, you and Aitken's in there. Look, uh, there's talk that um, there may be an injury to Felice Kafusi after this one. So you and Aitken could earn more time. Lemuelu might also sneak back into the team. So just keep an eye on that situation. Um, Aiden Caesar had a big one, 46 points. He can be a guy you eye off if if you really want um, a cheap half. And down the list, like Hamaso, he keeps scoring tries. Um, Ike Safarth grabbed a try, grabbed a decent score too. After a really, he started rough, and then he sort of heated up. Corosa got a rest in this game and then came back on. Look, 36 points. He played well when he was on the field, but he's got that um that thigh, it looks like, really strapped up. So we'll keep an eye on him as well. Um, Herbie Farmworth, he's out for about four weeks after this one. Tom Flegler looks like he could have copped an injury too. I'll keep you updated on that, but he was absolutely motoring before the injury. Um, Fair Tarpe, two tries, 29 points. It's not a great fantasy score, but he's playing good footy in real life, so the Tigers would be pretty happy with him. Um, and then, yeah, down the list, look, Asako had that quiet game, 20 points, 10 points from goals, and only another 10 points from him. John Bateman copped an injury, 15 points. He'll be down about 600K pretty soon, so worth keeping an eye on him. And then, yeah, Fano Brothers, less minutes as well. 
Um, keep rolling through here. We've got the Cowboys and the Titans, and we're, we're sort of rolling into the Sunday games here now. So Scotty Drinkwater, 81 points, absolutely killed it in this one. Look, a 56 average, 708K. He's a good price. Uh, if you wanted to go get Drinkwater, I don't hate that move. He is just dominating for the Cowboys. He makes a few mistakes and that kind of thing too, but with the way fantasy scoring is set up, he can make a few big plays and then get away with some of those mistakes as well. Because even in this one, you can have a look across the stat sheet here. Look, he's getting 16 points worth of tries, you know, 12 points worth of uh, line breaks, 10 points worth of tackle breaks. A couple of missed tackles, doesn't really matter. It's only minus four there. So, yeah, he's absolutely... Reese Robson had that explosion game we're waiting for as well. So 78 points, takes his average of 56. Uh, if you're on Robson, happy days. He absolutely crushed it. I'm a Robo owner myself, so I'm pretty, pretty stoked about this. But if I didn't have him, I wouldn't go by him necessarily. Um, he's doing fine, but you know, I think if you've got a hooker, they're all kind of the same. They're all a bit up and down. That's that's sort of my view on it. Jaden Campbell, he's got a 60-point game here. He's looking like a bit of a must-have, actually. He was just so dynamic in this game, and that 60 will boost his scoring um, and, and sort of price rises up as well. And in a week where we lost guys like Tedesco, for example, and a few other options, yeah, you could do a lot worse than Campbell. I actually like Campbell this week, and I expect Campbell and Crichton will be two of the most bought players this week. Dave Fafita absolutely killed it again. He's just been, he was really strong in this game. Um, not as explosive as you'd expect, but big work rate from him. He's just playing good footy in a Titans team, isn't doing that well. Brian Kelly could be a massive pod, 495k, 55 points. Just keep an eye on him if you want to do it. Ruben Cotter got bigger minutes because the Cowboys started to fade at the back end of this game after starting so hot, and they needed him back on the field. 53 points, super happy with that. And down the list here, look, nothing too crazy in this section. We talked about Aaron Clark a bit, didn't get the minutes. Finifuyaki played 18 minutes, only scored 29 points. He's not filling with confidence in terms of fantasy, but he's playing good footy in real life. Um, Tommy Dean, a bit of a quieter game as well, back to earth. Harley Smith Shields, yeah, only 15 points. He's not the, the guy we want. Kieran Foran with 11 points here with injury might get pretty cheap. At some point, he might be sub 300K, at which point I would probably consider him. Just a bit of an injury risk. He's been unlucky with injuries. That's all I'm going to say there. And then on the Raiders and the Eels, this was a crazy game. And Matt Tomoko kicked this off with 84 points. Uh, just a dominant game from him. Absolutely dominant. Uh, he tore through Parramatta through the middle on his edge. Whatever it was. Uh, at his price, 606k. You could do worse than him if you were grabbing a gun center. I don't mind it at all. 50 average. He is a bit of a stud. Um, Jermaine Hopgood, 66. Yet again, we talked about him on the buys list last week. Uh, he is just an uh, absolute monster. Um, look, doesn't matter if Pamrata win or lose. He got 61 minutes in this game. That's about what you'd expect from him. 66 points, so 44 tackles, no misses. And you got 112 meters, small loads, all that sort of thing too. Morgan Smithies comes in, played 80 minutes, scored 65 points. That's what he does when he plays 80 minutes. If he keeps getting those minutes, which he might now with Horsburgh being hurt as well, Let's keep an eye on that situation going forward. But uh, Smithies could be a really good one to hold on to if you did hold on to him. Dylan Brown, 51 points. Yeah, he was right up top of the buy list. And Parramatta really weren't great in this game. And I can say that because I'm a Parramatta fan myself. Um, but Dylan was putting effort in the whole way through defensively on attack. All of it. 51 points, the reflection of how hard he played. And then going down the list, look, Schiller, he had three line breaks in this game. Scored 49 points. Tell you what, could have done worse than Schiller. I said last week he was relying on attacking stats, which he is, but he got those attacking stats in this game, and he looked really good in terms of passing the eye test as well. Joey Lasik, 48 points in 80 minutes. We'll see what happens. Paramount need to make some changes. So um, Joey Lasik's job security in terms of 80-minute hooker status isn't great because they sometimes bring Brandon Hands in, um, but he was great in this one. Ethan Strange, Stone Cold Killer, 48 points, looked really good in this game. If he ever starts kicking the ball, he's going to be so dangerous for fantasy. Um, but right now, he's running that ball. He's he's making good sort of defensive workload as well. And he's in a spot where if you've got him at center, you're pretty happy with him. Jamal Fogarty, a bit quieter, 43 points. If you're in Jamal Fogarty, you, know, you were probably expecting that 60 he's normally getting. I wouldn't worry too much. He's still an absolute weapon. P Panasini is getting to a good price, so keep an eye on him. Bailey Simonson, he might be a guy you could look at in the next week or two. He'll be about 400K, very interesting to me personally. Sean Lane, 80 minutes, 33 points. Um, look, he's getting the minutes, got the role, but the work rate and the attacking stats haven't been there consistently for him. Danny Levi scores another try. Is that four tries in five weeks? Because that is absolutely absurd, and yeah, he keeps on pumping those. 
And then down the list here, Corey Horsburgh, a bit of an abdominal strain, something like that. So we'll keep an eye on that, but he could be out for a bit, which isn't going to affect you because only 0.2% of coaches have Horsburgh. It's more going to affect the surrounding players. So the minutes for, for you guys like Tarpanay, the minutes for you guys like Smithies, all these sorts of players. And Jordan Rapana, he went off with a brutal injury in the first half, came back for the second half, scored 24 points. Um, as a Rapana owner, I was pretty sad that he didn't get to play the full game because he was looking very good when he was out there. So, you know, he should be back next week against the Titans as well, who have leaked two fullbacks in the past. Gutho, 21 points. Yeah, real crash back to earth, 65 last week, 21 this week. We'll see if he can bounce back to his regular self um, next week. But, yeah, that was a tough one for Gutho owners to swallow. Um, Blaze has, yeah, look, five missed tackles, two errors. There's, there's quite a few negative stat points against Blaze. Um, he kept trying through the whole game. So if you look at his stats here, he got 22 tackles, 86 meters. Um, look, he kept on going through the whole game. He kept on giving it his all. It's just a tough spot. Parramatta were, were comprehensively beaten, and we cannot blame a, a three-game rookie. So 20 on points. He'll have big games as well. That's that's all I'll say there. And then Shawnee Russell, he's getting cheaper, 14 points. Might be worth a look at some point. Um, Tom Starling, if you ever got the start, yeah, he's getting extremely cheap. But uh yeah, those are my sort of key takeaways from this week. Uh, if I was trying to pick the buyers for this week, I'd say most people are probably going to go look at Jaden Campbell and they're going to go look at Gus Crichton. You might also take a look at a top gun like Cherry Evans before Origin or Sean Johnson. Um, if you're looking at your sell list, guys like Drew Hutchison have really peaked. Uh, guys like Kyle Flanagan. We might look at James Tedesco after his injury as well. We'll see what's happening there. Um, and we could look at some guys who have maxed out in terms of their cash generation too. Anyway, that is our fantasy recap for this week. Hopefully you had a good one. If you didn't, let's focus on next week. And you can check me out at The Casual Athlete on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. I'll see you 